Welcome back to the lead. Time now for our buried lead. That's what we call stories we think are not getting enough attention. Now imagine you work in my business. You're a newsman or newswoman. You're sitting in a meeting with your staff going over the stories you plan to cover that day. It might look like this. Now imagine a contractor who was hired by the FCC and he walks in and starts asking you questions like, what is the news philosophy of the station? Who decides which stories are covered? Or have you ever suggested coverage that was rejected by management? Doesn't that sound like an infringement on the rights of the freedom of the press? But those were the exact questions in a proposed study written for the Federal Communications Commission last year, a pilot program to go to news organizations in one South Carolina city to find out what barriers exist for the population on, quote, critical information needs. This FCC program and questions about government meddling in a fair and free press have generated a lot of controversy after FCC Commissioner Ajit Pai decided to speak out against the study in a Wall Street Journal opinion piece. He wrote that, quote, the agency plans to send researchers to grill reporters, editors, and station owners about how they decide which stories to run. As a consumer of news, I have an opinion, but my opinion shouldn't matter more than anyone else's merely because I happen to work at the FCC. Now, in response, the FCC chair announced that the questions about news philosophy and judgment and choices would not be asked. Pai and I spoke earlier today. Explain to us, why did the FCC think this study was a priority for them? And in the first place, what were they trying to learn? So the stated purpose of the study was to fulfill a statutory requirement, uh, a law that requires the FCC to report to Congress every three years on barriers that entrepreneurs and small businesses face when they try to get into the communications industry. But if you look at uh, the design of the study, it doesn't really have anything to do with that purpose. And that led a lot of people, including me, uh, to wonder what the real purpose is and uh, whether it's fulfilling uh, a necessary uh, goal of the FCC. Well, what do you suspect the real purpose was, if, if not um, what the stated purpose was? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. I didn't have input either into the adoption of the study or to its implementation. But uh, if you look at the study design, it goes into some of the core functions of the newsroom. How do you decide what stories to cover? Do you have a news philosophy? Uh, do listeners or viewers uh, perceive that your station is biased? Those are the types of questions that don't have anything to do with that stated purpose, but do go to, I would say, editorial and uh, newspaper judgment and freedom. So, so the, this was written last year. What made you write this op-ed now? Uh, so the uh, proposed study design was adopted last year. In November, the first pilot site was uh, located. That was going to be Columbia, South Carolina. And it was supposed to start this spring. And as I dug into the 78-page study design, I got a little more worried about what uh, the proposed implementation would mean for our basic constitutional freedom of the press. And that's why I decided to speak out on the op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal. You've acknowledged uh, that the FCC chairman, Tom Wheeler, who, who came in after... Uh, this program was already underway. He has said they plan to remove some of the more controversial questions for people in the newsroom about their editorial judgment, about their philosophy. The FCC spokesman released this statement, quote, by law, the FCC must study the ability of entrepreneurs and small business to compete in the media marketplace. The commission does not and will not interfere in newsrooms or editorial decision making. Any suggestion the commission intends to regulate the speech of news media is false. The draft questions in the study are being revised to clear up any confusion. Uh, what's your response? Do you, take, uh, do you take the FCC, your organization, and its word? I certainly think it's a positive step for the FCC to instruct the contractor who is doing this study to remove any questions about news philosophy, about editorial judgment, and otherwise to keep the government out of the newsroom. My own preference would be for us not to do this study at all to the extent that it doesn't really relate to our purpose, uh, which is reporting to Congress on barriers to entry. Uh, but, you know, this, as I said, this is a positive step, and the devil's going to be in the details when the study is actually implemented. Is there not an interest? I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Obviously, I don't like the idea of the government intervening in uh, the gathering or uh, distributing of news. As a newsman, I have a bias in that way. But to play devil's advocate, aren't there places where local industry or local political parties have too much influence and it might be in the interest of the public to try to push back on that? 
Well, one of the great things about the modern media marketplace is that consumers in markets big and small have unparalleled choice when it comes to the news that they want to get. It's no longer just a few broadcasters and perhaps a radio station. They've also got uh, you know, the new print media, which is exploding in some markets. Uh, they have online options, which never existed before. And so I think especially in the context of a more competitive media marketplace, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for the FCC to assume uh, that an uncompetitive marketplace is the norm and to send researchers out to confirm uh, or disconfirm uh, that supposition. Commissioner Ajit Pai, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jake. There is some breaking news on this story. After we interviewed Pi earlier today, the FCC sent us another statement announcing that the study would no longer include any questions to men and women in newsrooms. Quote, media owners and journalists will no longer be asked to participate in the Columbia, South Carolina pilot study, the FCC said. I just got off the phone earlier from, uh, on the phone with Commissioner Pi. He called this move an important victory for the First Amendment. We should note that the FCC says this pilot program will continue once they create a new study design, we will continue to stay on top of this story.